My father himself got distracted and had an elevator run over two of his fingers and chopped them off, and he had to go to the hospital and have them sewn back on. I beg your pardon? I beg your pardon? Is this the longest you've ever been faithful to someone? Yes. Yeah? And you're being 100% honest with me? Under than 10%. Why the fuck you lying? Why you always lying? All right, it's time for me to go. All right, son, I love you. Bye, guys. All clear for takeoff. Oh, you're beautiful. I missed you. What? What the fuck? Did you do a background check on him? No, because I don't know his name. What's his last name? What's his date of birth? Iggy what? So it's you kind of confusing. She don't know his last so name. <laughs> <laughs> hey guys, welcome to 9 Day Fiance The Other Way. So we're on season six, episode one. And in my other video, I kind of yelled at you guys because nobody told me I wasn't looking at the camera. But then I practiced looking at the camera and it's not working out. So I'm going to continue looking here. And I hope you guys don't mind because I don't mind. Anyways, let's start off with James and Tata. Oh, by the way, before we start, chaotic ass episode. Like, oh my gosh, what the hell is wrong with all these people? Okay, so we first meet James. He tells us that he works for his famous job as an elevator mechanic. But the job is super dangerous because his dad already lost a couple of fingers because he wasn't paying attention. My father himself got distracted and had an elevator run over two of his fingers and chopped them off and he had to go to the hospital and have them sewn back on. But don't worry because according to James, it's still a great job. But it's a great job and I love working with my family. Lord have mercy. So he likes mining for fun. He says that he never knows what he's gonna find. But fortunately for him, he found his wife. I'm here. So her name is Mitalia. Some people call her Tata, so I'll also call her Tata too. I think it's a pretty cute nickname. So she's 27 and she's from Indonesia. And they also have a cute dog. You're coming home with me. So they met on social media. She said that he had no game, but he's hot. But when I see his pictures, like, he can hot. So, yeah. <laughs> Tata's so funny for that. Okay, so she admits that she's a jealous person and James knows that and he's kind of scared that she will take his dick. Why are you laughing? <laughs> because it's so scary and I get so nervous. <laughs> 911, what's your emergency? <laughs> so after two months of dating online, he visited her and then he asked her to marry her after five days. You know, it's like, wow, this has happened it's so fast. Actually, that's the standard of 90 Day Fiance, so they're kind of moving at a really great pace. So Tata can't stand America, or at least the weather in America, but in their culture, they have to follow their husband. But after two and a half years, she's like, yeah, fuck that shit, I want to go home. Since I got here, I have so many health issues now, I have something on my throat i can't even swallow i got a lot of headache she's been to multiple doctors but nobody's helping her so she's going back to indonesia where she can get the help that she actually needs she tells us that she wants to get back into health and be healthy enough to have kids but before they can go they need money i need to make sure that i'm making as much money as i can before i leave we only have enough money to last probably a few months in indonesia so they head to a record shop to sell the records and there they have a conversation with the owner so so this is their plan. The first one is to make money before they leave because they're broke as fuck. And then after that, Tata will leave first, then James. And once he gets there, he will work with Tata's dad who makes banana chips. I love banana chips. I would work there. Okay, back to the episode. They have a problem. They didn't tell his parents that he'll be leaving, which is very strange since he does work for his parents. Tata doesn't like that he didn't tell them and that he makes decisions and then tells her after he already made them, which yeah, valid, that would piss me off too. I didn't know you didn't feel like you'd had a say in that. I'm afraid that if I go first and then you tell your family, they just gonna hold you. So now they start arguing and then this poor lady is like, what the fuck is going on? But then things get worse when the shop owner practically tells him that they got shit records and he can't use any of them. It's all music, sadly, no one really wants to listen to at all. You have a bunch of jokes. <laughs> Embarrassing! <laughs> so now it's a different day, Tata's friend Adele comes over and they're talking when Tata tells them that they're moving back to Indonesia tomorrow. Tata explains that she needs to go back for a health problem so she can have kids, but then Adele drops some bigger news and tells her that James is scared to have kids. Uh, James was like scared about having kids. You never told me that. What the fuck, James? 
what the fuck now she's really hurt which is valid like that's a huge deal breaker which is why he probably didn't tell her so now she's back home and she's packing all of her stuff but she decided to tell him later about what adele told her but then james tells her that the dog can't even come with them to indonesia and then now you just tell me the day when i left you just tell me right now when i'm about to leave it? pause why does he like sharing bad news like at the last minute why does he keep doing this because like honestly what's wrong with him so then james tells her that there's a rabies outbreak so if the dog shows any signs of symptoms then they will immediately euthanize him so then tata starts crying and not gonna lie i never thought i would see it cry worse than jasmine's choose your fighter <laughs> you're so ridiculous sick <laughs> Okay, so that's where their segment ends now for shikana and sarper what the fuck is going on oh my god you are my secretary right i'm the boss I I no what is actually going on he's yeah. role-playing babe um we're gonna skip that shit oh my god <gasps> My battery died. Oh, thank God. Okay, so y'all should already know Shekinah and Sharper. They met online, blah, blah, blah. She moved to Turkey for him, blah, blah, blah. He slept with over 2,500 women, blah, 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 blah. He wanted a kid, and now we're all caught up. So, she couldn't practice her job as an esthetician, so she came back to the U.S., and she's been here for about three months now. And so now they're doing long-distance relationship. But they can't handle the distance anymore, so they're now working on being together once again. So now we see Sharper, and he tells us that when he's so anxious, he starts counting so he's counting grain of rice which i don't believe that shit don't make any fucking sense if i'm wrong tell me i'm wrong i'm not wrong i count rice grains on the plate anyways he's also counting people and cars and he tells us that he even counted people that he was intimate with x is our, uh, the number of people oh my what i'm not normal for sure yeah, we kind of know that. So Sarper is now a book boy because she kind of made him cut all his female clients who brought in 90% of his income. And you know what? That's hella dumb. I have no savings left. So then his cousin is like, you need to set boundaries. Next time she won't let you leave the house. So then they call her jealous and Sarper doesn't know what to do because apparently he has changed so much. I am the worst resume guy on the planet, but I changed so much, so much for her, but she still wants more. So then he's like, when she gets back to Turkey, she needs to calm down with her demands because there is a limit. So now we see Shakana and she meets up with her friends and this guy's lips look so chap. I don't need it. I don't need it. I definitely don't need it. I need it! Like, bro, if you have to, just lick it. Oh my gosh, now I'm getting distracted. Anyways, her and Sarper decide to apply for the K-1 visa, and then we find out that she's having a nose job. Okay, sure, whatever. But then she said that Sarper is designing it. And Sarper has actually designed a new nose for me. What? She kind of... <laughs> oh my gosh. Moving on. Okay, Josh and Lisa. What the hell is even that? Oh, okay. So we see a child playing with some toys, and he's having the time of his life. Just kidding. That's just Josh. Josh, I missed you. You're so handsome. Oh, you're beautiful. I missed you. And you know what? I actually find the whole, like, building the Lego pieces thing very impressive. But when you start, like, taking, like like objects or like people and be like hey how are you oh i'm fine i'm good let's kiss Mwah. it gets weird especially if you're a 47 year old man you know what i mean oh baby she causes weird but she doesn't know that we're in love don't listen to her babe i love you more than words can ever express oh honey oh baby Did you hear that? Oh my gosh, where's my lip liner? Babe, I think she's gonna take me. Don't worry, babe. I'll protect you. Ah! Ah! Baby, no! Ah! Ugh, this shit doesn't work like it used to. Ah! Baby, baby, no! Oh, oh, no! No! This can't be! I will avenge you! I swear onto it! I will avenge you! You're mentally ill, which is why one day I'm gonna open up a hospital for mentally ill Africans.
Anyways, he says that he's a big kid at heart, but he loves playing video games and toy cars. But he takes it a step further by moving in with his parents. But then all of a sudden, we hear some loud noises from his parents chewing. Just to find out that he has, um, what's it called? Mesopotamia? Mesopotamia, that's not how you say it. Let me, give me a second. Misophonia. Misophonia. He got that. I have a condition called mesophonia. It's the, basically the hatred of sounds. Anyways, it's so bad that he has to wear headphones. So now we meet Lily, they met on a language app, started talking, and then started dating. Oh my gosh, what is that? I like your beard. But you say, hmm, not sexy, honey. Oh my gosh, no, she's right. Go that shit back. Anyways, Lily is 46. They talked for two years online before she came to the US. Then he proposed and then they had a wedding in Vegas. But because of her successful cosmetics business, she left after a month of them getting married. And now Josh is about to go live with her in China. And now it comes to Josh playing us some beautiful music on his piano. Playing me a little song, huh? Of course. Right, you're getting better. Want a drink? <laughs> Anyways, Tim and his brother are really close and he's also gonna come to China to attend Josh and Lily's second wedding. So his brother's worried if there's no happy ending for Josh because he already sold his house, he got rid of all his furniture, and he can't even work there at all. So how long can't you you can't work there for a living? As long as I'm there on a marriage visa. Which begs the question, what the fuck does Lily actually get from this? Josh says that it doesn't bother her, but it does bother him because he can't contribute. And because they switch traditional roles, he fears that they will be judged. I am gonna wonder, why does a woman like Lily want to be with a man like me and support me financially? And yeah, he's kind of right. So there's like two options here, okay? Two options. Either she really, really, really likes him, or she has ulterior motives. Okay, so now we see Lily and Oh, she lives nice. Welcome to my crib. Ooh, this is nice. Whoa. Damn, girl, she even got a wound for her bows. So she has her cosmetic business, and her goal is to make everyone pretty as fuck. She built her business from the ground up. She created wealth for herself. And her business is very profitable. And then she shows us a room that she prepared for Josh. She even gave him the theater room because he loves movies. And oh my gosh, she actually sounds like she's in love. Okay, so then they call each other. They can't really communicate that well together. So he's going to also bring a translator when he goes to China. So she shows him around the house and he tells us that he really didn't want a big house. He was fine with them living somewhere small. But Lily insisted and it ended up with her losing a lot of money on this house. So you just spent a lot of money. Yes, losing a lot of money. And that's where their segment ends. Next is Corona. Okay, so we meet Corona and I'm not gonna lie, the first time I saw what she was doing, I thought she was creating content for her OS, you know? <sighs> Come on, okay? Anybody would think that. I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Okay, moving on. So, she's a birthing coach. She graduated from Penn University with a 4.0 GPA. And oh my gosh, this girl is hella smart. Her goal is to become a midwife and deliver 10 thousand babies jesus that's a lot of babies her mom kicked her out at 16 years old so she had to live and take care of herself she then became a go-go dancer and i don't think i can show you guys this but damn that thing is moving so she's moving to iceland to be with her man named inky but he kind of looks like jimmy neutron you guys see the resemblance or is that just me anyways this is how they met they went to iceland and she was partying hella hard she was tired and inky was there and he kind of put her in his bed so she can go to sleep i was like wow this is like a quality guy like who lets a stranger take a nap on their bed a stranger that could have essayed you or even unalived you Let's be honest, you're very, very, very lucky to be safe and sound right now. Anyway, she slid into his DMs and then they went on a date, but he didn't make a move. So then she went back home, but then they started talking again and then they started dating and now she's moving to Iceland. But there is a problem. There's only one midwife school in Iceland and she's not guaranteed a spot yet, whereas she's guaranteed one at her school in Penn University. So you would think that she would stick with the one at Penn graduate then go to iceland but no she wants to take the risk and just go straight to iceland you're so dumb you are really dumb for real 
So now Kawana's with her family and she's about to tell them all about Inky. Inky? But it's spelled with a G what though. I-N-K-A? It's I-N-G-I, -I, so it's Inky. Inky Stinky Winky. Mm. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> So she's like, you guys are gonna like him. And Granny's like, I don't know about that. And she's like, oh my gosh, how could you say that? And then Granny says that she doesn't like people. So they're like, why are you even going there? And then she said that it's cause he's more established there. And so they bring up her school and she said that she's for going the one here and applying there. What? Oh my gosh, she's so dumb. You guys, nobody is on board with her because it's so dumb. And the more she talks, the more stupid she sounds. They only spend 20 days together in person. She doesn't even know his full name. So it's kind of confusing because in Iceland, like you take your father's first name as your last name, but then he also has a family name. She don't know his last name. So what is on his driver's license? I don't know, I've never seen it. And then she says that they've never been in a relationship before and they're all like, what? What's wrong with him? And yeah, either he's lying or he's a straight up weirdo or both. Oh my gosh, the conversation is so chaotic because every answer she gives is another reason why she shouldn't go. Moving to Iceland with a virgin. He's not a virgin. He has no so... girlfriend. He has sex. He has hookup. So that mom is like, he's probably a killer. They were smiling in the news and then they're dead. They are so funny. Oh my gosh. And then Grandma's like, are there even black people there? And then Corona's like, yeah, there's like five black people there. Corona. Well, at least now you make six. There's like five okay. black people in Iceland. <laughs> <laughs> So then she says that she soft partners him, which is something that she came up with, and that is that she's calm and gentle when she wants to go off on him, which I kind of don't get because all you're doing is just controlling your emotions. But then it makes sense because we find out that she has anger issues. So her mom doesn't believe her with the whole soft partner thing because she always acted out when she was a child. Papa for everybody. There is not a school that you have ever been to that I have not been called ever because of your mouth. And then her whole family's like, he doesn't know the real you because you got serious anger issues. Crickets, cause it's true. Okay, so that's the end of this recap. I love the first episode of The Other Way. Oh my gosh, it's so good. Um, what do I usually say? Oh yeah, thank you so much for watching. Please leave your thoughts in the comments below. Please like, share, and subscribe. And bye!